Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum and today we'll be looking at the important features of the fauna and the radial bone. The important features of the fauna and the radial bone. So this is the ulnar bone and this is the radial bone. These two bones are the bones of the forearm. And the bones of the forearm and you can see how the ulna and radius is positioned in the forearm. So this is the ulna at the medial part of the forearm and this is the radius at the lateral part of the forearm. So these two bones when they Joined together forms the radio ulna joint. There is a joint that these two bones form, which is called the radio ulna joint. And also, the proximal part of this bone, the proximal part of these two bones contribute to the articular surface of the elbow joint. The proximal part contributes to the articular surface of the elbow joint. Why did this star part? Why did this star part contribute to the Articular surface of the wrist joint. So let's see the important features in the ulnar bone. So the ulnar bone is divided into the proximal, the body, and the distal part. So this is the proximal part. This is the body or the shaft. Why this is the distal part of the ulna? So at the proximal part of the ulna, there is this process here. There is this process at the proximal part of the ulna. This is referred to the to as the olecranon process. This process here is referred to as the olecranon process. This process lies into the olecranon fossa. It lies deep into the olecranon fossa. When you, when you extend your elbow, it lies deep into the olecranon process when you extend your elbow. So we have another protrusion. There is a protrusion here. You can see this protrusion here. This protrusion is referred to as the coronoid tobacco. It is referred to as the coronary tobacco. This protrusion that I marked here, you can see it, is referred to as the coronary tobacco. Now, this coronary tobacco, if you can remember the coronoid fossa of the, of the humerus. So when you flex your arm, your forearm rather, when you flex your forearm, the coronoid tobacco lies deep in the, it lies deep into the coronoid process of the coronoid fossa of the humerus. Then there is this groove or this fossa here. You can see this fossa in between the olecranon process and the coronoid tobacco. There is a fossa here. This fossa, so this is referred to as the trochlear notch or the trochlear fossa. This is referred to as the trochlear fossa or the trochlear notch. Now it is called the trochlear fossa because the trochlear of the humerus is embedded into this. This is where the trochlear of the humerus lies and that is why it is called the trochlear fossa. Then having seen these three important parts, if you turn the honor medially. If you turn the ulna medially just like I am turning, you notice this notch here. There is this notch here that I marked. This notch here that I marked, this is where the head of the radius lie. So it is called the radial notch. It is called the radial notch because this is where the head of the radius lie. Having seen the radial notch, 
then on the just directly on the day uh, coronary tobacco you can see just directly under the coronary tobacco there is this protrusion that i'm marking now you can see this marked protrusion this marked protrusion under the uh, coronary tobacco this marked protrusion here is referred to as the ulnar tuberosity it is referred to as the ulnar tuberosity then just below the radial notch remember the radial notch just below this radial notch there is this groove there is a groove here and also a line at the both side of the groove it is something like this so here is the groove why this is the line so if you look at it you see the two line and the groove here the groove is referred to as the supinator groove the groove is referred to as the supinator groove while the crest the two line is referred to as the supinator crest why the two line is referred to as the supinator crest so i believe that we've seen the important features in the proximal part of the of the owner if we move to the shaft of the owner if we move to the shaft of the owner you notice that the media part of the shaft there is this sharp edge there is this sharp protruding edge there is this sharp protruding edge i'm marking it there is this sharp protruding edge so this sharp edge is referred to as the interosseous border it is referred to as interosseous border this is because this is where the interosseous membrane that joins the ulna and the ridges at the middle this is where the text is at, is attachment from so that is why it is referred to as interosseous membrane then if you see this important feature at the body of the uh, ulna bone let's move to the distal part of the ulna let's move to the distal part of the ulna so this is the head of the ulna this round rounded part here you can see this rounded part is the head of the ulna why there is a a process that was given this pointed part here you can see this pointed part here that is from the owner head this pointed part is referred to as the styroid process of the owner the styroid process of the owner so these are the important features that are found in the in the owner so let's look at the radius or the radial bone briefly we'll look at the radial bone can you see this rounded part this rounded part this rounded part is referred to as the head of the radius this is referred to as the head of the radius so this is it the head of the radius now just directly under or directly inferior to the head of the radius you see the neck of the radius this is the neck of the radius 
this is the neck of the radius. Just directly inferior to the head is the neck of the radius. Then there is this protruded part here. Can you see this circled protruded part here? This is known as the radial tuberosity. This is known as the radial tuberosity. Then when we come to the shaft of the radius, when we come to the shaft of the radius, there is another pointed edge. There is a pointed edge at the medial part of the shaft of the radius. There is a pointed edge here. This is referred to as the interosseous border of the radius. Remember, we've seen the interosseous border of the ulna. So, the interosseous the interosseous border of the radius. So, this is the interosseous border of the radius. It faces, it faces the interruptions border of the ulna, and this is the way it appears. This is the way it appears, and you can see this gap at the middle. This gap at the middle is where the interruptions membrane lies, covering this gap. So the interruptions membrane lies here, covering this gap. Then. Coming down to the distal part of the radial bone, coming down to the distal part of the radial bone, there is this fossa here, or a depression here. This depression is where the head of the ulna lies, and this depression is referred to as the ulna notch because. This is where the head of the ulna lies. That is why it is referred to the, as the ulna notch. You can see it. This circle part is referred to as the ulna notch. So, look at the head of the ulna. If you place the bone this way, you can see the head of the ulna lying in this notch. And you see how the head of the ulna lie in this notch. That is why it is called a ulnar notch. Then, can you see this pointed part? This pointed part. This pointed part is referred to as the styroid process of the radius. This pointed part is referred to as the styroid process of the radius. Then, this part now this part that is like a depression forms the articular or it helps in the articular surface of the uh, a wrist joint. It helps in the articular surface of the wrist joint. So it articulates with the, with the carpal bone to form the wrist joint. So these are the important features of the radial bone. So, at the end of this class, we've been able to see and understand that here is the proximal part of the ulna and the radial bone, why here is the body of the ulna and radial bone, why here is the distal part of the ulna and radial bone. So, let me do a recap. This is the uricranum process. This is the trochlear fossa. This is the crinoid tobacco. At the medial part, this depression here is the radial notch. This depression here is the radial notch. This protrusion here is the ulnar tuberosity. Ulnar tuberosity. This two line is the supinator crest and the groove at the middle is known as the supinator groove. I forgot, it is called the supinator crest 
because it gives attachment to the supinator muscle at the at the uh, forearm. It gives attachment to the supinator muscle. So that is why it is called the supinator crest and the supinator groove, the groove at the middle of it. Then coming down at the body of the ulna, you see the interosseous border. You see the interosseous border. At the distal part, you see the head of the ulna and also the styroid process of the ulna. This is the head of the radius. And just inferior the head of the radius is the neck of the radius. Then this protrusion is referred to as the radial tuberosity. Coming to the shaft, this pointed sharp edge is referred to as the interosseous border. Interosseous border. Then coming to the inferior or the distal part, this pointed part is referred to as the thyroid process of the radius. This Depression here is referred to as the ulnar notch, and the depression here forms the articular surface of the wrist joint together with the carpal bone. So, we've come to the end of this class. I would like you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like, comment on the video, and please share the video. It is very important. Share the video. Thank you very much.